And what's interesting is if you do the math and you look at Amnesty's International's list of countries with human rights violations, you notice that the, the timer thing, thing is not moving on the, do the math, right? Um, YouTube thing. It's been like, so it's been like this for so this is the good two minutes now. The in the world is essentially providing surveillance technology. And you're like, what do they do? And so when we were out raising money for Baba Job, we met an investor who actually put money in. Oh, wow. Now you can't hear what he's saying. How strange. What's that mean? Oh, wow. And like, well, and we can do it by person, by social network, geography, and time. Which, again, sounds really vague. So what does that really mean? And so when you begin to break that down at a very deep level. And this is some of the videos they put up on their site, and I think it's really interesting. So over here you have a person, right? And if you look really closely, you see these are all the land records associated with them. These are the prison records associated with them. This is every telephone, financial call, or pr passport immigration record that they made. And they provide this 360 degree analysis of essentially what is happening, right? And so if you go through, and I'll blow this up, they basically can integrate oh, almost that? any piece of data <gasps> together, right? And so if you look at this, they say, hey, we can take CCTV footage which includes encoding of license plate numbers, which then can be looked up against car records and see who's driving where. We can do all that's audio right. recordings, like, you know, every single telephone call conversation that's being it's happening in the way. Way. It's all the way They can end. do any biometrics. They can do all websites, and plus, you know, the normal stuff of Facebook, Gmail, telephone records, financial data, and everything else, and they correlate. I don't know what would happen if I move my right? mouse, though. Obviously, you have to be in the security apparatus to use this. But oh, this is what they do. Nothing. And what's interesting is how they boast, oh. right? If I go forward. That they say they have 350 mm, users, or 1,000 users, and 4,500 security <laughs> organizations. And this is the boasting package that I thought was really amazing. They said that 90% of all target packages were identified with their software. That's that weird. means they are the guys that figure out who the drone should kill. That's their main job, right? They're saying, if I do a social networking analysis of all telephone calls, records of where anybody is traveling, how do I identify the missing center that is Osama bin Laden? Or that is, you know, the number two guy. I'm not even listening to the video in, anymore. In an Al-Qaeda network, whatever. And then, you know, to give them an idea, like the vast amount of data between wiretapping records, Which investigation and reports, and it's possible to sort through without iTunes products, right? <laughs> What's interesting is, you know, a year ago they got bought by IBM. Um, IBM has the biggest, you know, sales force selling to governments in the whole world. Uh, it was about $4 billion. And so, you know... Ah, okay, weird. Okay, and then if I go like this, watch. And then he'll keep talking, and he'll keep going even further. Better and better <gasps> oh, he's back to that part, activity, how weird. Uh, you know, this activity has greater benefit to me and the people around me. And so what's interesting is you look... This is essentially the process by which you know, cells began to At work together, people began to work together, villages began to work together to form That's so system, weird. And, and so on and so on. And so we get to this piece and we say, well, what are the factors that then come out here? So clearly we want these right? Uh, we want more empathy. That's right? weird. That one of the hallmarks that comes out of this, that are dreams <laughs> or evolution, right? Hey. Is that if I want to care for my children and care for my <laughs> uh, fellow man, empathy and love, seem to be things that come there out. Namely, trade. And trade requires trust and reputation. If I want to have a long-term relationship to you, you work together, you can't screw me over. And thus, I need to develop a reputation as somebody who's trustworthy. But thing. there's also negative pieces that I think Not are very moving. interesting, too. Um, <sighs> namely, we get less freedom, right? The state of, you know, or the city of Chennai right now, for all of its rhetoric, cannot independently decide to go to war with Sri Lanka. And similarly, my cells, even as I'm flicking them off my fingers, right, can't basically decide to do something differently. We're all in this together. So we're essentially trading in this process of evolution. And this is a key point. We're trading freedom for security. We're trading the freedom that we have in terms of making our own decisions and doing things that are consciously, you know, just what I want to do for the security of being within a bigger collective and the safety that comes with that. And so, you know, that's, if you look at where does this go, where does this end up in the long run? And clearly things like the UN, right, seem to be a, get bigger and bigger organizational units. And what's interesting is this seems to be over and over again driven by interdependence, but also that threats and terrorism and viruses seem to play a big role in this. And I'll give you an example. So, you know, what drives these things? You know, the answer is usually pirates, like many things. So there's an interesting story of... If, 
how did Italy become a, uh, Italy and not just a collection of city-states, like when you think of them in mythology, all of this, you know, the Roman versus the you know, guys from Athens. And so what happened was, Essentially, these pirates. I don't know, I don't know what it's going to do, but I don't want to record a gazillion million years of this. Hopefully, I catch it at the end. And then they go to that might another be. city. And so, basically, the people throughout Italy began to get together and said, if we're going to solve this problem, what we need is a unified nation. These things are. So, you know, one of the things that boggles my mind is if you ask, how did the Mumbai terrorists get caught? And it's like, well, they made a bunch of phone calls on the sea from, in, from outside Mumbai in Pakistan. And so who gets to know about those phone calls and more importantly, the location of those phone calls? The NSA. This boggles my mind. But namely that if each of us in this room right now make a call to Pakistan, the US government knows where we are. This is the price that a company or a country needs to pay to interact with the plus one system that is our telephone network. That boggles my mind. So some of these things are happening, right? The other piece that I found out was this very interesting group with a very innocuous name called the I Truth. Right? And so, you know, they, this is their website. They say 80% of the world's national security organizations exploit I Truth natural solutions. And, you know, they also brag about things like uh, 150 countries worldwide use them. And what's interesting is if you do the math and you look at Amnesty International's list of countries with human rights violations, there's 80 of them on there. There's only 250 do the math, right? Um, so what's interesting is that this is the biggest organization in the world essentially providing surveillance technology. I'm like, what are they doing? And so when we were out raising money for Baba Job, we met an investor who actually took money. Oh, there it goes. Hey, what's that mean? <laughs> like, well, and we can do it by person, by social network, geography, and time. Which again sounds really big. So what does that really mean? And so when you begin to break that down at a very deep level. And this is some of the videos they put